So you can imagine some people, um, if you speak to them in a certain manner, uh, might be either inspired or annoyed by the style of communication. And uh, you might be surprised to know that there are uh, probably four major behavioural profile types. And one is a driver, one's the influencer, the other person is compliance, and the fourth one is steadiness. So I'm using the DISC model here, which uh, is, a, is a tool that was invented uh, by the chap who invented Wonder Woman, but also invented a lie detector uh, in the Second World War, was involved in creating one. And this DISC behavioural profiling tool has been around uh, for quite a, quite a long time. It's very well accepted in the marketplace. And it's a similar in uh, results to what you might say Myers-Briggs could, could give you as well. Uh, it's a behavioural profiling tool with 24 multiple choice questions and you can even sit a free copy on our website if you'd like to get a result to see what your, your behavioural profile might look like, which I totally recommend because it gets you to understand how others see you, it gets you to, to really understand your key strengths of your behavioural profile, and it helps you direct yourself with career choices because you can understand how playing to your strengths can be really quite advantageous to your career growth. So hiring staff, but inspiring staff. People are motivated by certain things. We talked about the attention to detail is motivated by getting things right. The Steve Jobs behavioural profile, with a high D or the driver behavioural profile, wants to get things done and get things done fast. So if you're blocking them, or, or for example, you're not fast enough, or, or you've, you're coming across too, too detail orientated, you would probably annoy the Steve Jobs types. In fact, the high C or the compliant person who's fairly slow about doing things, although they're task orientated, would probably annoy Steve a bit because they're just not fast enough. They seem to be too detail orientated and Steve's just after results, he wants results now. Doesn't want excuses, just wants results. So the, so the high D or the driver behavioural profile is looking for a faster communication, a more bullet point communication, and doesn't really want to get caught in the details, doesn't want wishy-washy, maybe sort of, it's about this, I might be interested in this, uh, explanations or in adjectives, they just want to know where you're at, what have you done, if you've made a mistake, what happened, will it happen again? And anything else is, uh, it will be quite annoying for them. So that type of behaviour profile could come across fairly blunt uh, or bossy to say the, the high S or the Mother Teresa type behaviour profile, the steadiness, the 42% the of Australia population that are more interested in a caring uh, relationship which is more people orientated and you might say uh, more family values, more calmer, more patient, more stable. These are people orientated people who are fairly slow and methodical. They don't show stress on the outside. Their biggest view is change. So if you're wanting to give them a project, you really want to give them one project, one big project. And don't change the goalpost halfway through. Don't come introducing new projects uh, because it will stress them out because they've only got space to really handle one thing and one thing and they want to do it really well. So they love helping people and one of their biggest faults is probably over committing in that they can't say no that easily for a lot of these people. And they will say that they would love to help you, yes, put it there and I'll, I'll get to it. And you'll find someone else will come in to uh, say the same thing and they'll be stuck with a whole big shopping list of things to do. On the outside they'll look they're, like they're quite stressed but underneath they'll be quite Sorry, on the outside they'll look like they're not stressed, but underneath it they can be very, very stressed and you wouldn't even know until one day you get a resignation letter stuck in your, uh, your inbox because they've just snapped, they've just got to the end of the tanner. The other behavioural profile uh, is the high eye, the influencer, who's very talkative, energetic. They are very good with uh, uh, people. Uh, their attention to detail usually is not that fabulous. Uh, they are the fun of the party, if you like. So they can multitask and, and do a lot of small things uh, at once, 
but they, usually they might drop a few balls here and there and they're easily distracted. So these type of people, as you can imagine, would be managed differently. So understanding a person's behaviour profile gives you clues as a manager on how to, to get the best out of them, uh, how to communicate with them, and, and how to essentially manage them so that they can play to their strengths. The other use of behavioural profiling is in sales. Now, you've got to be careful here, because some people can be talking about manipulation, but what we're talking about is getting away from the person's own emotional bias. So sometimes when, you, well, when we all first meet a person, we make a, a, our minds up within about 10 seconds. And we make our minds up whether the person is A, a friend, B, a foe, someone we can ignore, which is used the main population, or a sexual partner. So those are the four choices we've got. Are they a friend? Are they a foe? Are they someone we can ignore? Or are they a sexual partner? Or put it bluntly, can I eat it? Or is it going to eat me? So with that in mind, that little 10 second window, the amygdala makes that final flight decision up for us. And from there, our emotions take over. And that's, that's where the dangerous part comes. So once um, we've made our mind up, uh, whether a person is something we want to, some person we want to deal with, then we open our mind up of how we're going to deal with them. So generally what happens, logic is used after we've made our decision up. So we use logic to validate our emotions. So if you can imagine in sales, your first impression, if you come across as a pushy salesperson to somebody who doesn't like pushy salespeople, doesn't matter what your product is or the message you're trying to put through, you've got a blockage in the way. And it's really a speed hump to getting the sale. And in many cases, it might be a brick wall. So what knowing a person's behavioural profile will do will give you clues into how that person likes being approached in sales. A very uh, a, a key clue would be to actually mirror the behavioural style of the person that you're selling to because it makes them feel safe around you. It makes them feel like you're just like them and that you care and you understand them and therefore what you're selling to them, you're selling it to them because you can understand it could be a benefit to them. And they're more open to listening to you because they see you as a human being now instead of a pushy person just trying to put push product. So sales, hiring people and managing people. That's how behavioural profiling is, is generally used in the larger community. So let's, um, let's have a talk about some of the core behavioural profiles. We talked about four before, the dominator, the influencer, the steady person and the compliant person. So in examples of a driver, you might consider Donald Trump. Very task orientated. Maggie Thatcher, again, very task orientated and very fast in communication, almost like a bullet point sergeant major type of conversation. Now these people might come across as brash bullies, but underneath it, they're very forgiving. The next day is a new day. It's all about getting the task done. And they, it's not anything personal, it's just business in their world. So for them, they don't hold grudges. If you're good at what you do and you, and you take responsibility for your task, sure you might stuff up every so often, but if you stuff up, put your hand up and say, I stuffed up, this is what I've learned from it, this is what I'm going to do now, you'll be forgiven and the next day will be a new day. So they're like the, um, they're like the big teddy bears basically. On the outside they look really scary, but underneath it, it they show their love by getting the task done. So you can imagine if you come home to a house and there's a husband who's very task orientated, he's showing his love to his wife by getting things done around the house, by fixing up things, by, uh, by um, essentially tinkering in the shed to get things done ready for the, for the house, doing the, the lawns, etc., doing the manny jobs. But the wife might not be task orientated. They might, she might be more people orientated. They might be sitting on the couch wanting to have a chat with her hubby. They might be feeling very unloved because the husband doesn't seem to want to spend time with her. 
And her way of showing love is by communicating, having a, a time and, and chats. And that, that is, there's no wrong or right in, it, which, in either way, but the styles are different. So the husband will be getting frustrated with his wife, thinking, geez, you never really help around the house. You don't, you don't really appreciate, um, you know, you don't appreciate me because you're making my job harder because I'm having to do all these things for you and you're not doing anything. You, you're lazy, you're not respecting the time that I'm putting in because you're, you're making more things for me to do and you're, not, and you're not helping. Whereas the wife will be thinking, well, you don't love me because you never, you never spend time with me. You seem to be avoiding me doing all these other things around the house. So there's a miscommunication uh, in that relationship and it only needs to, once they start to understand it's their style about doing things, not that they don't love each other, it's just their style about showing their love, then you start to see the things open up and people, if they understand each other's behavioural profile, they start to respect the other person's strength. And that's why it's also good in team building within businesses. So hiring, sales, managing, and creating cohesive teams is how behavioural profiling is, is generally used in business as well. So another behavioural profile you might look at is the influencer. This is the fast-paced, relationship-focused person. And essentially, you might see Will Smith or um, a diva who might be a singer, for example, like um, uh, Dolly Parton, for example. So they're, they like to be seen as a centre of attention, um, they're quite um, outgoing uh, people and they tend to use their hands and wave around a fair bit. <laughs> you might see them at a party, they're fairly clumsy. They tend to walk around in circles while they're talking and knock into things. Uh, but they're, they're very much fun orientated. So their, their biggest fear is not being liked. So if you gave them a job which had a lot of small tasks and a lot of variety, and a lot of meeting people and going out and being active, that would be quite inspiring for them. So a job in sales, a job in HR, yeah, would be quite appropriate for them. Then there's a steady person, or the Mother Teresa profile we talked about before, the Charlie Brown type of person. So these people are, again, relationship focused. They'd be great nurses. Uh, they'd be great psychiatrists. They'd be great at the help desk. These people, a, a bit slower in their communication. They're more deliberate in their pace. They're more considered in how they communicate. They take the time to listen. And generally in a meeting, they'll be the last person to speak up though, because they don't want to create a, a confrontation. In fact, they're very, very big at avoiding confrontation. So in a meeting, they might disagree with you, but you'd never know unless they go silent. That's probably the only clue you'll ever get. And that's pretty scary because sometimes you think in a meeting that you've actually got agreement when you haven't got agreement. You've just got someone who's suppressed. So as a manager, uh, this behaviour profile, as I said before, is 42% of Australia. And they are the people who get things done in a methodical, logical, stepwise fashion. You need them on your team. They are the nice people in your team. The people that don't seem to have any disagreements with anybody, they just want to get along. They may, for other people, the team seem to take forever. And they, they may not transmit a sense of urgency. They've got their own style about doing things. And you might have a look at what they get done and you might actually see that they actually do get things done because they've got more of a process and they get bigger things done like larger projects done. Then the last behavioural profile we'll, we'll look at is the compliant person. Task focused and slower. So you might say a uh, perfectionist. So you, um, Lisa Simpson, Bill Gates will be a couple of examples. So again, these types of people show their love by getting a task done to a high degree of, of, uh, of a high degree of quality, if you like. So some other examples you might find uh, in that particular behavioural profile of the high C, you might see um, Fred Hollows, uh, he's one, um, Kevin Rudd even. Uh, the, the thing about their behavioural profile is, all behavioural profiles is that 
when they're not stressed, they're quite uh, what you might say cooperative and they're quite flowing about getting things done. But when they get stressed, there is a tendency of behavioural profiles to step into what we might call a danger zone and they start exhibiting bad behaviours. Now each particular behavioural profile has got three or four different bad behaviours that are, that, are, that are normal for that particular behavioural profile. So as a manager, you might see some behaviours happening in your team that you might see as a bad behaviour, such as someone who who tends might be a meddler or continually whining or, or gossiping about other people or coming across as a bully or a maid, or a ma a ma well, I think they know it all, or, a, or someone who never seems to agree with anything or someone who says yes all the time. So these are behaviour profiles that, or behaviours that actually um, can be quite uh, detrimental to a team. You could imagine the, uh, uh, the person who's gossiping is probably the most dangerous one uh, so, as a manager, by looking at a person's behavioural profile, you can predict what bad behaviour they're most likely going to exhibit when they're stressed. And for a manager, then you can preempt, and you can also handle that bad behaviour. So, in other podcasts, we'll talk about t typical bad behaviours and, and ways that you can actually handle them. There's actually formulas to it. It's like dialing a phone number. If you miss a digit or you put them in the wrong order, you'll stuff it up and you'll make it worse. But if you've got the right process, you can handle a person's bad behaviour quite efficiently and put them back on track uh, of being less stressed and more cooperative. So behaviour profiles are quite a powerful uh, tool to have in your toolkit as a manager, as a salesperson, as a hiring manager or a recruiter. And there are only one part of your coaching toolkit that you might have up your sleeve if you're looking to motivate people. 